All right, in this video, we're going to talk about <clears throat> um, doing double integrals. And before we actually do a double integral, I'm going to calculate this single integral. But notice it's a multivariable function. We have both x's and y's in this problem. And I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to integrate with respect to y, and I'm also going to integrate with respect to x. And then we'll put these ideas together a little bit to actually calculate a double integral. So when you do these problems, it's a lot like taking partial derivatives. Depending on what thing, in this case, you're integrating with respect to, we're integrating with respect to y, we're going to treat x's as constants. And the first thing I did is just bust this up. And you don't have to do this. You can do it all in, in uh, one step. But now the idea is, since I'm integrating with respect to y, 2x is just like a constant. So if I was integrating, say, 7 dy, I would get simply 7y. So in this case, the constant 2x comes along, and I just tack on a y. And then since I'm integrating y squared, I do integrate that like normal. And I'll get y cubed over 3. And normally, you tack on a plus c. But in this case, you can tack on a plus c of x term. And the idea is that c of x is just some function of x. And as a check, if you took the partial derivative with respect to y, if you take the derivative with respect to y, you'll get 2x plus y squared back. The c of x term will simply go away um, because, again, if we take the derivative with respect to y, we're treating it like a constant. So this would be your solution. So let's do the same problem, but instead now let's do 2x plus y squared, and let's integrate it this time with respect to x. Same idea, now x is my variable, so if I integrate 2x, I'll get x squared, and then if I integrate y squared, again, now y squared is like a constant, I'll just tack an x onto it, I'll get y squared times x, and then now again I can just tack on this c of, in this case, y term, because if I take the derivative with respect to x, I will get my 2x plus y squared term right back. So that would be your answer in this case. Obviously um, these are not the same things, um, so you definitely have to be careful um, when you're doing these. And the example I'm going to do is hopefully fairly straightforward. It can be really tricky when you have, um, you know, if you have to do u substitutions or integration by parts or something more complicated on these problems. So if I can find my other problem here. All right, so in this problem we're actually going to calculate a double integral. So um, from 1 to 3 and from 0 to 2 of the quantity xy plus x squared y cubed. And we're going to integrate this with respect to y first and with respect to x first. And you have to be careful. The, the notation um, that you see on the outside, it definitely has to do with an order. You, de you could integrate this with respect to x first. But if you wanted to integrate this function with respect to x first, so if I wanted to do dx dy, and there's some rules on when you can just flip-flop um, the order of integration. There's something called Fubini's theorem that deals with this. The idea in the problem I'm going to do, the 0 to 2 limits of integration go with the dy. The 1 to 3 limits of integration go with dx. So if you want to do dx first, you would have to switch the limits of integration from 1 to 3 and then you would do the dy stuff from 0 to 2. So these would be considered equivalent integrals. Okay, so notice again the inside 0 to 2, that's dy. Notice here the inside 1 to 3, that goes with the x's. So this is something to be aware of. But I'm going to do the problem like it was. So I've got my integral from 1 to 3 just hanging out. And I'm going to integrate the inside part. So the and I'm integrating with respect to y. So x is like a constant. I'll get y squared over two. 
plus again x is like a constant so the x squared will simply come along I'll have x to the fourth over 4 and I like to remind myself it, originally the limits of integration dealt with y you're gonna substitute in y equals 0 and y equals 2 and then we'll integrate all that with respect to x the stuff left over and at this point you're gonna replace all the y's you should end up with a function only in terms of x at this stage after you plug everything in and simplify it down so if I plug in y equals 2 I'll get 2 squared which is 4 4 over 2 is 2 so I'll have a 2x term left over plus if I plug 2 in 2 to the fourth is 16 16 over 4 is 4 so I'll have a 4 x squared term. And notice if I plug in the lower limit of integration, 0 for y, 0 for y, I'll simply um, get zeros for both of those terms. So this is the thing, this is all that's going to be left over, simply 2x plus 4x squared. And now you're back to just regular old integration, stuff that you saw probably in first semester calculus. You have a function all in terms of x, we're integrating this with respect to x. Again, the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of 4x squared would be 4x cubed over 3. And again, now we're evaluating this from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So we'll plug in our upper limit of integration first. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 thirds times, well, 3 cubed is going to give us 27. That's our upper limit of integration and then we'll simply subtract away the lower limit so if you plug one in you'll get one and then we'll get a positive four-thirds and now we can simply just grind this down a little bit so we'll have nine twenty-seven over three is nine nine times four is thirty-six minus i'm just gonna leave the last part alone so nine plus thirty-six that's forty-five forty-five minus one is forty-four I'll have 44 minus 4 thirds and I'm lazy so I'm gonna stop right there if you want to simplify this one down a little further go ahead get a common denominator uh, make it a mixed number do whatever you want to so this is um, again kind of a relatively easy and straightforward um, example of doing double integrals again you have to keep in mind depending on what variable you're integrating with respect to you're going to treat the other variable like a constant and then it's just doing regular integration techniques and just being careful with the fact that you have all of these variables floating around just like a definite integral with a single integral was a number when you calculate it notice at the end when we do a definite integral a double integral we still simply get a number out at the end so I'm going to do some more complicated examples of these as well where you have to do um, U substitutions and things of that nature. Um, feel free to take a look at my website. I've got a ton of basic integration problems and I'll also have some more um, double integration problems over these rectangular regions and I'll also have some over more generic general regions where then you have to do you have to think about the graphs and do things again that get a little more tricky. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can.